I took an image of this bike during our holiday because I thought it looked pretty awesome. Now we're going to edit it and the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to add in some contrast using the Filmic RGB module because that's actually a module that's being automatically applied. Now let's go to the look tab and just slightly increase the contrast which already makes some difference. But we need to have this bike stand out. And for that, we're going to use the following modules. Now, here's a fun fact. I have never talked about the RGB primaries module here on my channel. And I thought this would be a great opportunity to do so because I'm going to add in some saturation using the RGB primaries module only. Now, first, let me explain what this is. With the RGB primaries module, you can adjust the hue and purity of the RGB primary colors. So an example, which red, green, and blue they represent. While leaving the uncolored pixels, so the gray ones, unchanged. Now, in addition to preserving the gray pixels, the opacity relationships between the colors are also preserved under this adjustment. So if you increase the purity of, let's say, the blue primary, then the opponent yellow's intensity will increase to balance things out. And then if you twist the blue into the cyan, the opponent yellow is twisted towards orange. So this module is basically a channel mixer, but it just has a different interface. And even though all of these sliders are named red, green, and blue, all the adjustments that you're doing are global and will affect the overall colorimetry of the image. So just like the channel mixer does. Now, when you apply this before the Filmic RGB or the Sigmoid tone mapping modules, the RGB primers can be used to make small adjustments to colorimetry. But when you apply it after the tone mapping modules, it may be used to apply creative edits such as tinting. That was a mouthful but I'm going to use this to increase the saturation of this image. So I'm not going to use the color balance RGB module for that. I just wanted to use this. Now what's good to know is that the red U will shift the reds towards the yellow, which is the positive value. So that's here or the magenta, which is the negative value. And then the purity basically is like the strength, right? Now the greens shift towards the cyan or towards the yellow. And then the blues will shift towards the magenta or towards the cyan. And then with the tint, you can just change the tint overall. So you see here we have the different types of tints in the image. Okay, double click to reset that. And let's add in some saturation. Now I'm going to leave the red hue as is, but I'm going to drag the purity all the way to the right. And you already see the greens and the reds and basically the colors shift, right? Then the green hue, I want to increase the greens of these trees, right? I want to make them a bit stronger. So I'm going to drag this and I'm going to increase the green purity. And you see what happens. So if I decrease it, it kind of gets desaturated. And if I increase them, you see they get more saturation. Now this is too much and I think this will look fine. Now for the blues, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to push them to the magenta slightly and also increase the purity or basically the strength of that color. And you see what is happening to the trees in the background, right? Now, I don't want to overdo it because they will draw the attention away from the bike. But don't worry, we will be changing that in a second. Now, that's all we have to do with the RGB primaries module. And as you can see, we introduce saturation in a very cool and easy way. Now, while I'm editing this video, I do need to remind you that the entire image is being affected, right? So not just the trees and everything, but the bike as well. If you want to prevent that, obviously you would have to create a mask where you can use a parametric mask or a drawn mask or whatever you want. And then basically have everything selected except for the bike. I'm going to teach you how to create a mask in this image in a minute. I've also created dedicated videos on masks, which I'll link up there. Let's continue. Right, let's close this down and move on to the next module. And the next module will be the tone equalizer module. And this is where I'm going to get creative, right? Now, what we need to do up here is if we just increase this, for instance, the entire image gets affected. Same if we decrease it, the entire image gets affected. Now, that's something I don't want to do because I want the bike to be popping out and I want the background to be numbed down a bit. So that means we need a mask. So for that, we're going to click here and I'm going to use a brush and I'm going to paint over the bike, right? Now, what's good to know is that if you get a brush and then you release it, then you can go back here again and add in another brush. Right, so you don't need module after module after module. You can just you can just reselect the mask that you want to use and then paint over the bike again or your subject or 
whatever you're using in your photo. Now, for those of you who are still here, this photo will be in the description for you to download so you can follow along with this tutorial. And to save ourselves some time, I'm just going to do that painting right now and we'll be back in a minute. And with the mask over the bike, we are going to change the values of the tone equalizer module. And then click here so the mask is gone. And then if you hover over the image, you will see where the different values are. Okay. Now I'm going to increase this. And that already makes a tremendous difference. Now let's do some magic because we're going to create a second instance, duplicate instance, because we need the same mask applied. And then we're going to drag this down. So we're basically going to counteract the effect but you might wonder like why would we do that because now the bike is basically back to square one well we are going to invert this mask and there you have it now we need to feather and blur this to prevent halo and let's go back to the first tone equalizer module and then feather and blur that as well and if the effect is too strong you can always decrease it a bit so that it's more in harmony with each other now let's look at a before and after. So this is basically what we started with. And then this is where we are right now. And I'm still not really satisfied because I want to have it pop out a bit more. So I'm going to go to the local contrast one, which is a module I kind of use always. Now you can use a preset up here. So let's go for the clarity one. And then if we increase this slider, the detail slider, you'll see that the effect will become much stronger. And the same principle applies here. I don't want the entire image to be affected because that basically removes the effect that we want to go for. So I'm going to go back to the masking one. And rather than painting over the bike again, you can go up here, draw a mask, click it, and then select the tone equalizer one. And then only the bike or the mask of the bike will be shown again. Click this and here you have it. So take a snapshot. That's this one. And then go back to the original one, the Filmic RGB one. That's the one up here. So now if you move this slider from left to right, you see that this is the end result. And I think that looks pretty awesome. 